I know it has been a long time since I have posted, but to be honest and to be vulnerable, I have been having a really hard time with grieving my grandmother. I actually started seeing a grief counselor, which I think has been helping. And then also I started school in September. I started my third year in my program and it has been a lot. It has been very challenging. So that's why you haven't seen my face on here in a while, but I'm back and I have reading week actually coming up. So I will hopefully be able to film some videos. The point of this video is I am reading books that center around grief. So if you have lost someone and you're looking for resources like books to help with the grieving process, I am scouting out some books to see if they are helpful and I documented it in this video. I do plan on doing a part two because I do have some other books that I think would also be helpful that I haven't read yet. And that is what this video is. And if you are going through grief like I am, know that you're not alone, even though it feels like it. I hope you find some comfort with this video, whether it be that you can relate to me or that you find a book that helps you feel less alone. Also, if you like my glasses, this video is not sponsored, but I am doing a sponsored post on TikTok for this brand of glasses. This, is, this brand is called Firmu, and I do have a code that gets you 50% off and a link. So if you want to help support me or you are in the market for some new glasses, I will put the link in the description and I will put the code up on the screen in case you want to look, but no pressure. Also just wanted to mention that I did film this over the span of a few months so that's why I'm wearing shorts outside in some of these clips. I do live in Canada and it is getting a little bit cooler so just in case you're wondering I started this video I believe in August. So with that being said let's get into today's video. First book is going to be an audiobook. All the other books I'll probably just read physically but I'm doing the audiobook because one I don't have the physical copy and two I am packing for a trip that my nanny was really excited for me to go on and I'm feeling mixed emotions about it. I'm feeling those feelings of guilt, of having fun without her even though she really really wanted me to go on this trip and was so excited for me to go on this trip so I think this book is going to help me. So when I was looking for books about grief and like non-fiction books about grief this one came highly recommended like it's on like the top of the list or pretty high on the list of books that you should read so the book is it's okay that you're not okay and this is by megan devon i'm gonna start that and pack Hello, hopefully you can hear me over some of the noises in my neighborhood and hopefully you can't hear the music, but it's been a minute. I actually have COVID right now. I'm at my house in the backyard. It's been a bit rough, but I have still been reading. I have listened to a little bit more of the audiobook of It's Okay That You're Not Okay. So far I'm liking it, some of the things I agree with, some of the things I don't necessarily agree with, but I think it also comes with different forms of grief as the author actually mentioned in the book that, you know, losing a parent versus losing a spouse versus losing a child versus losing a grandparent versus losing a friend, like it's all different and different kinds of grief and different experiences and I think even one person's experience in my case losing a grandparent versus another person's experience losing a grandparent especially depending on the dynamic between the relationship of you and that person it's going to be different from person to person in the sense of the experience of grief so i did appreciate that notion in the book and there are some other really good uh, pointers especially to the effect of how to support somebody 
going through grief and kind of what is not super helpful that most people tend to lean towards as a default so that was very validating especially since i have been experiencing some of those instances of even though people mean well there's things that aren't super helpful when you're going through grief i actually decided to start a, another book this is a fiction novel and it is called one italian summer by rebecca searle searle so this book from what i've gathered from the synopsis is about this woman that has lost her mother and they were supposed to go on this trip to italy but it never happened and i guess her mother used to when she was younger she went on a trip to italy and like backpacked and all that kind of stuff her mother was supposed to show her like the ins and outs of italy and that trip never happened but she is prompted to still go on this trip and there's a bit of magical realism in this as she goes on this trip and she runs into a former version of her mother it's kind of like time travel-esque because it's her mother at the younger age of when she traveled to italy so i'm interested to read this i think it might hit close to home just because my grandmother was more like a mother figure to me like a second mother figure to me so this is also only like a little over it's only 245 pages which i appreciate with these kind of books because after you've lost someone and you know you're trying to find something to read you don't want to read this like huge mammoth of a book that deals with such a heavy topic so i think finding books like this that are concise but probably still pack a powerful punch is important so yeah let's get reading quick interruption to that montage the book is starting off with a Lorelai Gilmore quote which I think is very perfectly fitting because my mom and I are actually re-watching Gilmore Girls at the moment, so I'm already excited. Wow, so I just finished this. This took me two days to read. I read about 60% yesterday and then I just finished this about 10 minutes ago and I have so many thoughts. I really enjoyed this book. I want to talk about obviously the grief aspect of this book because that's what this whole video is about and I think this was a really great depiction of grief especially when it is somebody that you have cared for and you watch them deteriorate and like the aftermath of that the mother-daughter relationship in here is something that I really relate to it is that way for my mom and I but it was also kind of that way with my grandmother so a lot of this i could see parts of myself in like that dynamic what i think this book did really well is we're going on this journey with this main character and we're seeing her through the different stages of grief now they talk about the stages of grief and the reality that not everyone goes through every single stage and each stage of grief is going to be a very duration depending on the person, depending on the situation, depending on the grief journey. It's not all copy and paste and it's not a linear journey. We're seeing this character really go through it because her mother was a huge part of her identity and a huge part of her life and she is coming to terms with the loss of such an important person and trying to figure out who she is without that person in her life and she's trying to figure out the person that she is without her mother you do really get to see her growth in that and her coming to terms with the fact that her mother was more than just who she knew her as because 
in this book you do know from the synopsis that she meets her mother in Italy when she was in her 30s when she was on her basically own self-discovery trip 30 years ago in her 30s and she befriends her and kind of just learns who her mother was and it was a really beautiful story. In terms of the story, yes, there was a couple of flaws. There was one part of it that I don't really want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it, but it did make me a little bit uncomfortable, but then it was kind of resolved in the end when you knew what was actually going on, and I know that's very vague, but again, I don't want to put too many spoilers. But the other thing that I really enjoyed in this is showing different people's experiences of grief and kind of starting the conversation about how we can support each other during grief. So there's a situation with her and another character. They're both grieving the loss of her mother and they're two separate people. They have had two different relationships with this person and they're both grieving in different ways. One person wants to be alone and like isolate themselves and the other person just wants this like reassurance and wants to come together and grieve together but they don't really know how to support each other because their needs are different and I think that opens up a conversation about how when you're grieving somebody and you have other people in your life that are grieving that same person how can you support each other even if your needs are different I would definitely recommend this. I also do feel a really strong urge now to go to Italy and go to Positano and stay at the hotel that she stayed in at this book because what the author also does really well is like the atmosphere and your feelings of being in Italy and it almost feels like you're there. And I've always wanted to go to Europe so I feel like this will be a stop when I do finally go there but I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars and I really think it had some really good conversations on grief. It wasn't too heavy on the grief, I feel like it was a good balance of conversations about grief and then also just somebody figuring out who they are and self-discovery. And I think that there was a very strong message of hope. Yeah, this was a good one. So I finished the audiobook for It's Okay That You're Not Okay by Megan Devon. And the one word that I can use to describe this book is validating. So if you're looking for a book that validates how you're feeling, is not going to sugarcoat things, or it's not going to be something fluffy that tries to make you feel that this grief and what has happened is happening for a reason and that some big great things going to happen from this experience then I think that this is a really good book to read if you're in that stage of grief. I feel like it was a good time for me to read this book because I am at a similar stage. I am generally a pretty positive person, but I think it is normal and very healthy to be at the stage of grief where you're feeling like this really is a crappy situation and you don't really want to think super positively at this moment. You want to just process the sadness that comes along with losing someone that's really close to you no matter how old they were and no matter the circumstances and the anger and frustration especially in my situation I feel like I still have some anger that I'm working through with feeling like my nanny wasn't hurt by the medical system and and that she wasn't seen as soon as she should have been whether or not the outcome would have been different or not so I think some really big themes of this book and takeaways is um, there was one part of the book that I really appreciated and again was very validating trying to speak to other people about grief and society and most people's view on grief is 
very uncomfortable and a lot of the times people don't really know what to say so they say things that might not be helpful to that person in the moment. I really resonated with some of that and, and the lack of comfort with talking to people and noticing that when I do speak to some people it is an awkward conversation and I feel like I have to make them more comfortable because they're uncomfortable with the situation and talking about grief and death. I do think that there are some parts of this book that if you're not ready for might be not as helpful. Like I said, it doesn't sugarcoat anything and it's very validating, but I also feel like there's some parts of this book that if you're in a really heavy and dark spot, might not be a book to read at that moment. There's lots of talk about depression and different facets. So basically just be mindful and cautious when picking up this book and maybe looking into the chapters. The chapters are subdivided by different topics and even the author in some of the beginning parts or if there's a chapter coming up that she feels that you have to be in a certain mindset to read then she does preface that so just know if you're going into the book just to be cautious of that but I would definitely agree with a lot of the reviews that this is a very helpful book in terms of voicing a lot of the things that people don't really want to talk about when it comes to processing grief and I think the author presents it very well and makes you feel understood. And another part of the book was talking about some of the physical symptoms that come along with grief. And I don't think it's something that you really recognize until reading something like that, like for example, like insomnia, problems with digestion, just overall fatigue. Anyways, I do think that this was a really good read. The next book, we're gonna go to a genre that I don't usually read, but I think that this could be really helpful. It's also short, which I think if you're going through grief and it's hard to concentrate on like a full storyline or it's too much to focus on something with the theme of grief. This is something that you could read a little bit, put down, and then pick back up. So it is a collection of poetry and I kind of just stumbled across this. Oh my gosh. Oh. I got a little emotional there, I'll show you. It's called When I'm Gone, Poems for Times of Loss and Grief, and this is by Becky Hemsley, same name. I didn't notice this before, but something that I heavily believe in because I have experienced pretty significant loss in my life, especially at a young age. I lost my grandfather when I was 10 to cancer and he was like my best friend. Him and my nanny were some of my biggest cheerleaders and I lived with them. And so that was a really hard loss. So ever since then, I've really leaned into signs that they're with me. And some of those signs are cardinals, dimes, butterflies, like all that. But what I associate with my nanny is a feather because I've had quite a few instances after she's passed with finding a feather, especially when I really need a sign that she's with me. And I open this book. Do you see that? There's a feather. So I started reading the first poem and I... I have the strong urge to want to annotate this. I don't usually write in my books, but I just feel a need to because the first poem, like the first verse is already speaking to me. So I'm gonna do that.
So it's been a few weeks, but I finished When I'm Gone by Becky Hemsley. I did finish this actually a few weeks ago, but I haven't really sat down to talk about my thoughts, so I thought I would do that. I haven't posted anything in the last few weeks. I did start back up with school and that's been really difficult and we finally had a burial for my nanny last weekend so it's just been really hard and it's hard going back to school and coming home every day. No one's there to uh, talk about my day with because I would usually come home before my mom and I'd always go downstairs and my nanny would always ask me how my day was and she was also my little practice patient so it's been really hard but I finished this poem book and I think this this was amazing I annotated it quite a bit you can really see oh you can see there and I highlighted and I also wrote some thoughts in there this was really healing to not only be able to read this but to annotate it and honestly like not care about messing up or writing in a book because I usually don't write in books but I think this was definitely needed and it was very therapeutic to be able to write beside some of my favorite quotes from these poems and really be able to connect to them on a deeper level and Honestly, I would recommend this to anyone who has lost someone and you're finding it really hard to read and you don't really want like a full book to commit to about grief. This is something that you can pick up, read a couple poems, and then put back down. And actually, I did read some of these poems to my mom and she was also very touched by them. So I feel like they're also very general like they're not about like a specific person so no matter who you've lost I feel like you can take something away from some of these poems and this was just very beautiful and I recommend this wholeheartedly and then I did just start last night this book by Frederick Bachman this is my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry and I haven't read one of his books yet I do have quite a few of his but I wanted to start with this one because obviously the title like really drew me in and this is essentially about a seven-year-old who is best friends with her grandmother and you read this like on the flap of the book but her grandmother passes away and she's tasked with going and delivering these letters to this list of people that her grandmother has asked her to tell them that she's sorry so I am not very far into it yet but from the very first chapter I started getting a little bit emotional I think it's just such like the close bond between grandmother and granddaughter and if you don't know I've also lost one of my grandparents when I was pretty young I was 10 years old so kind of being back in that age with the little girl being seven and idolizing her uh, grandmother and just being very close with her grandmother just like really brings back a lot for me and the first sentence of the book is just speaks volumes and the way that Frederick Bachman ties this in and like really provokes emotion is just really beautiful the first line is every seven-year-old deserves a superhero that's just how it is anyone who doesn't agree needs their head examined that's what Elsa's grandma says at least and just the way that he really shows that in the first chapter is just beautiful definitely this book is a little bit quirky but I think that is purposeful because it is third person but you are following a seven-year-old and even though the seven-year-old is more mature than most kids her age there's definitely that like innocence of a child kind of in this writing so the other thing I wanted to mention too is if you're a Taylor Swift fan I really felt connections to something that happens in the first chapter to the song by Taylor Swift the best day and if you know that song you know what happens with that song and something very similar happens to Elsa 
and her grandmother ends up making it a more memorable day so yeah I am, like I said, not very far into this, but I am really looking forward to continuing this. Okay, it's been some time now and I have finished My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. Now this book took a lot longer to read than I initially anticipated. I have the mixed feelings about it because I did annotate it a little bit because there was some quotes in there that were really hard hitting. Having a grandmother is like having an army. This is a grandchild's ultimate privilege, knowing that someone is on your side always, whatever the details, even when you're wrong, especially then in fact. A grandmother is both a sword and a shield. When they say at school that Elsa is different, as if this is something bad, or when she comes home with bruises and the headmaster says she has to learn to fit in, this is when granny backs her up won't let her apologize, refuses to let her take the blame. Granny never says to Elsa that she shouldn't let it get to her because then they won't enjoy teasing you as much or that she should just walk away. Granny knows better than that. People in the real world always say when something terrible happens that the sadness and loss and aching pain of the heart will lessen as time passes, but it isn't true. Sorrow and loss are constant, but if you if we all had to go through our whole lives carrying that whole time, we wouldn't be able to stand it. The sadness would paralyze us. So in the end, we just pack it into bags and find somewhere to leave it. So I definitely think that there was some good discussions on grief, especially with somebody so young. I feel like I could relate to this as a young person when I lost my grandfather, but also now because the main character, Elsa, she feels very alone in the world and I think that's very common when you are experiencing grief. You feel like nobody really understands, everybody's kind of moved on and you're still kind of left there, still grieving that significant person in your life that is no longer there. So I definitely feel like there were some of those themes. The one criticism I have with this book is I found it a bit hard to follow at times because we're in third person but in the point of view of the seven-year-old girl. There is this major theme of a fairy tale world that Elsa, the little girl, her granny, has made up and there's a lot of symbolism that throughout the book you come to understand why the granny was telling these stories but I also feel like there's a lot of words and we would go in and out of like talking about this fairy tale world and then back into the real world and I felt like I kind of got lost so definitely before bedtime when I would read I would get a little bit confused or a little bit taken out of the story but other than that there's a whole cast of characters that you get to meet along the way and it's kind of like the theme of community and her not really feeling as alone as she feels so it was good i think his other books um anxious people and bear town are the more popular ones so I definitely want to read those ones. I do have those on my shelf so. So I think that's going to be it for today's video. I am planning on doing a part two. Hopefully in this video you have found a book that you want to read if you are in the grieving process or you have experienced grief and you want to feel like you're not alone and to have some of those feelings validated. Like I've probably said earlier in this video that I really like books with deeper topics especially when it's something that I can really relate to because again it makes you feel less alone and it makes you feel like you're being heard. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not subscribed already please subscribe to my channel and with that being said I will see you in the next video.